But one of the things I prayed this year was, Lord, what do you want me to get rid of or stop this year? Like, what is it that you feel like I just need to eliminate from my life? Every time I'd go in, I'd be like, hey, can we just like do a, one little thing here? Cause then they will help the, I was like, well, can we do a little? Then I was like, whoa, I will forever be here figuring out what I can change. Hello, you guys, welcome back. We are sitting back down, we are chatting. I got my barber here, and we are gonna have the conversation of what the Lord is currently teaching me. I think this is gonna be a new little segment that I'm gonna do, and buckle up, because there's quite a lot the Lord is teaching me right now. So, you guys seem to really enjoy the video that I did on modesty. If you have not watched that, I would definitely pause this video and go watch that, just because I'm gonna piggyback off of quite a few things that I mentioned in that video, and I think it'll really help frame this one. But yeah, I'm excited for this this new like little segment I loved the conversation that we had over on my other video about modesty and I just like pray that we kind of continue that conversation here now with the idea of vanity where did this all start this year as you guys know it's the new year and I feel like I always try to make more of an effort in the new year to do something different try something new my husband and I actually just did a podcast that would have gone up the day before this one on new year same you and so we kind of just talk about the idea of how we are a new creation in Christ and how as Christians our new year's resolutions should slightly look different than the world's because we should have a eternal mindset in our years and so with all that kind of prefaced, um, one of the things I prayed this year was, Lord, what do you want me to get rid of or stop this year? Like, what is it that you feel like I just need to eliminate from my life? And his response to that was my nails, which at first I was like, okay, cute, sure, whatever, not a big deal. But then I kind of started thinking about it and I was like, oh, wow, I think this is actually really powerful. I started getting my nails done. I would get dip every six to eight weeks for over two years now. I think it marks like two years this month. Once my son Ari was born and he was around six months old, I remember just feeling really desperate to like want to do something for myself and just like wanting my body back after having two babies really close together and breastfeeding and just being pregnant back to back. I was just like desperate to do something for me. And at the time getting my nails done and like being able to go away for an hour or two was the solution for that. But then I kept getting them and kept getting them. You guys, I have had dip on my nails consistently for two years. There was not a single time that I like took a break or stopped because this was after COVID. So had it been before COVID, I know I would have had to have stopped, but this was after COVID had happened. So nail salons, I remember I was always going with a mask on, like it was, a, nails were like new and on the come up again because people were able to go back to the salon. After that, um, I just continued on. And another thing that I also did was I started to get baby Botox. I started to get my lips done again. Not that I f ever really felt convicted about it, but I wasn't really in a place to, I would argue, even care. I found a million and four reasons for excusing it, and I'm not going to say that this is something that is sinful and that if you do that, then you are sinning or that you need to stop. All of these things are going to be what the Lord is teaching me, and so I'm, my hopes in only sharing this with you guys is that you find some type of encouragement or even just have these conversations with the Lord in your prayer closet to see what the Lord might have for you, but I'm explaining what he has worked on with me. So kind of speaking just in the past. So after I had my son Ari, after I sat breastfeeding him, I went back to doing a little bit of baby Botox, getting some lip filler here and there, and kind of just doing this whole maintenance thing with my face and just changing things that I didn't really like or that I felt like could look a little bit better if I did. Now, I'm so thankful for pregnancy because when you're pregnant, you can't do that. And so I remember right before I got pregnant with Evangeline, I had done it for the last time and then I got pregnant and I was like, oh dang, like I'm gonna have to stop. Like, mm, okay, whatever, it's fine. And during that time, the Lord really just transformed my thinking and my thought patterns because my thoughts were really what were getting into my own head. It wasn't even stuff that people were saying or not saying. It was honestly just in my own heart of like my own thoughts of like, oh, like I wish this was a little bit different or, oh, I don't really like that part. Let's see if I could slightly change it. And the thing about Botox and the thing about filler is that you constantly have to get it done. And especially with what I was doing, it was, I was only getting a couple of units. And so as soon as those started to wear off, like my face would drastically look different. And so it was kind of like this whole up 
upkeep of like having to redo it over and over and over again. And looking back at pictures now, like I was really starting to distort my face to an extent. Like it just, Botox freezes your face. And so I didn't have movement in my forehead. I wasn't able to be as expressive as I wanted to. And the Lord gives us expressions and facial movements for a reason. And so just during my pregnancy, he was kind of just slowly working at the idea of me not going back to doing it. And then once I had Evangeline, I was like, wow, I really don't have the desire to do it again. I felt this conviction and I prayed that the Lord would convict me because I didn't feel convicted about doing it. Now, not to say that if you do it, that there is something wrong. What is your heart behind what you're doing? What is the motive? For me, my motives were wrong. And so for me, that it, not that it became an idol, but borderline, it was something that I was doing very frequently. It was something I thought about very frequently. Anything that is taking up our time and our energy can easily become an idol. So that was something that I was starting to idolize. I'm thankful for the grace that the Lord provided to me in the nine months of my pregnancy because once Evangeline was born and I had another daughter, then the true conviction really set in of like, wow, this is not the example that I want to set for her and Ari and Alethea. And he really like took me to this place of how he grieves that idea of me not liking the way that he made me. And he just brought me to this place where he was able to put me, and this makes me so emotional, but I was able to look at my kids and see what he would feel if my kids did something to alter the way that they look. Like the things and little features that I love about my kids the most or the features and things that I was nitpicking about myself. And it just really brought me into this place of like, ew, yucky. like these things are so beautiful and so precious to him. Why would I want to change even the slightest thing, you know? If we look at Psalm 139, 13 says, For you formed my inward parts. You needed me together in my mother's room. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. He really just took me to this place where I was able to see how like each of my children were knit in my womb. Like he knit us together so perfectly and precisely in our mother's wombs to look exactly how he wanted us to look like. And so I was able to just look at my kids and be like, I can't even imagine how grieved he is to know that he spent so much time putting me together and making my nose a certain way and making my lips a certain way and making my body shape a certain way. And then here I am being like, no, I don't like that. I want to change that. I want to alter that. So he just took me to that place. And I think it really just opened my eyes to the perspective in this new idea. And so kind of just reeling it back in going forward when I prayed like, Lord, what do you want me to stop this year? The idea of me stopping getting my nails done was such a tangible and easy thing for me to do that I didn't even have any type of hesitation. I was like, great, I'm gonna call them tomorrow and just get these removed, get them all dusted and get them all off. I was like, great, this is gonna be so exciting. And I've loved it. It's only been a day, I got them off yesterday. And it just feels so fresh and so new. Yes, it's gonna be great that I'm not gonna have to devote so much time going and I'm not gonna, I'm, we're gonna save so much money. It was an expensive thing. But from the start, I remember Jordan and I like specifically set a budget for it. And so it wasn't like a financial thing because I remember at the time when I started, it really was a form of me just being able to do something for me but in this season that looks different for me right now in this season something that's for me is me actually reading books and spending time sewing and knitting which is crazy I feel like a grandma you guys but I swear grandmas know what to do grandmas are so good and so oh wait I just oh my gosh you guys I just pieced together something. Oh, the Lord is so funny and he's so good. Another prayer I've been praying is for the Lord to help me be handy. Oh, this is gonna make me cry again. He's so good. <gasps> Guys, he cares so much about us. Even the smallest things are so important to him. Evangeline's just looking at me like, mom, you need to get it together. Okay, another thing that I prayed was for him to help me be good with my hands. I mean, I cook. I clean with my hands. I do a lot with my hands, change a lot of diapers, but I've never like really created anything with my hands. And I like want to be crafty. I want to be DIY. -y. Like I want to be able to do more things, making things for my kids or just making things for me to use around my home. And that wasn't really something that I grew up with. Like my mom didn't really do anything like that. And so it feels really foreign to me. So I was just praying. I was like, Lord, I want to be like more handy with my hands. So it's so funny that he asked me to take off my nails 
and like not have them done anymore because when I was sewing a frustration I kept running into was my nails would get into the way because my nails were so thick from the dip it would be hard for me to like sew or pull the thing off and I'm like I remember I'd be like hi huh, I feel like this would be a lot easier if I didn't have these fake nails on like it'd be a lot easier for me to just be a little bit more crafty mm. and so it's so funny it just like put those two together maybe it's something simple maybe you're looking at me like Melina's absolutely lost her marbles and you know maybe I have but I'm glad I did because my marbles are way closer to the Lord than they have ever been and so I just want this video to encourage you and I have a friend Nava if you guys don't follow her you need to I've had her on the podcast for girl talk we did an episode talking about staying madly in love with your spouse and it was such a powerful message that she shared and I still get comments about it to this day but Nava has really really been I can't you guys like she's truly just such a woman of God and such a prayer warrior and it's so beautiful to witness and see that in her life but she did a Q&A and someone was asking her a couple of things about self-esteem and just the way that we are. My goal with this video isn't for you to leave feeling like, oh, I've done this before or like I do this, like I need to change everything because that's not what I'm saying at all. I feel like the Lord prunes and changes us in our own ways like I still self tan I still have highlight in my hair I'm gonna get my hair trimmed like I'm still gonna be into fashion like there are so many things that I'm still going to continue to do because those were never things that I did out of worship and things that I felt like I had to do and so my prayer is that the Lord will continue to keep doing this and continue to prune things out of my life and he slowly has if you guys go back to my videos from when I was 20 when I was Jordan and I first got married I would not be caught dead on camera without full face of makeup on and without fake eyelashes and like a full like everything I'm not even wearing foundation today like I have some bronzer on what the Lord has done through the years is just really give me this confidence because guess what my confidence does not come from my performance my confidence does not come from what I look like with what I do what I don't do my confidence comes from the Lord truly from Jesus Christ and so because I'm able to say that my rock and my foundation is still and does not move things don't waver things don't get rocky like he is my rock had I put my self-esteem on the type of foundation I was wearing or how many eyelashes or like these little things then that would be a different story and the thing about vanity that I think is really tricky is it's a really fine line between doing something to honor God or doing something for works and for religion and so I feel like that was the biggest hesitation that I have with this video because I would even argue to say that if you use sunscreen that's a type of van like that can be vanity because oh sunscreen helps you not age and protects your face from the sun and so therefore you're not gonna age and then you're not gonna have wrinkles and so that's not good can't do that can't do sunscreen that I'm trying to stay away from the idea of being like a Pharisee and just putting rules upon rules upon rules upon rules to give us this nice little cushion of works that we can do to be righteous or to be more like Jesus that's entirely what I'm trying not to to do and try not to advocate for it. And the only way we're able to discern this and the only way we're supposed to know what the Lord is calling us to do or not to do is to pray about it. I pray that this video encourages you to do that. Share with others what the Lord is doing because yesterday I posted on my stories that I was getting my nails off and you guys, I don't think I've ever seen my DMs filled with so many people saying, oh my gosh, same, I prayed about it this week and the Lord's been tugging at my heart and this was confirmation. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, because for me, when I prayed that, I really didn't know what that would mean. He made it very clear it was my nails. And I was like, oh, okay, interesting. And then I went on Instagram and a friend that I follow, Jess, her name is Jess Throw It On. She had posted, I'll tag her down below. Her name is Jess Throw It On. I love her. The Lord is really using her right now too. And she's been such an encouragement. But on her stories, she posted that she was gonna stop getting her nails done. And I was right after and I was like, whoa, okay we're doing this I think it's really encouraging to see and pray and see what the Lord is having for you maybe it looks different maybe for you it's getting your hair done maybe for you that means I don't know maybe getting rid of fake eyelashes or maybe not doing your eyebrows I've shared this before but once I had my kids the Lord slowly started pruning things out of my like makeup routine because at first like I was always doing the whole foundation full B eyelashes da, 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 da. and then I stopped doing the foundation and then now I don't do my eyebrows anymore and like it's just been this slow process process of just seeing what the Lord does with that so anyway back to Nava so on her stories a while ago she shared two really powerful things one thing that she shared was that she actually did a fast from a mirror 
which I thought was so powerful. I will, she has a full post that she's done. I'll link it down below. I'll give a very short summary of it, but basically she was getting to this point where she was just really stuck, struggling with her self-esteem. And so she was praying about it and the Lord asked her to fast from the mirror. So she did for a month. People would come and say like, well, you're so beautiful and this, this and that. And she was like, you don't understand like what goes through my head. The Lord really worked through her during that month of her fasting mirror. And she said when she first looked back into the mirror that she was able to see herself the way that God views her and it was just so beautiful and really changed a lot for her. So that was one thing that she mentioned that I just thought was amazing. So maybe that's something that you might want to do right now is like fast from the mirror. Can I add something? Yeah, go ahead. Come on in. I just want to find something here. Which verse is it? And then another thing that she shared was, and I'll just read it because I actually took a screenshot of it because I was like, wow, this is so good. Okay, while she's finding that, I'm reading on 1 Peter 3, 1 Peter 3, 3. Do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, mm -hmm. which in God's sight is very precious. Mm -hmm. This is how the holy women of old used to adorn themselves, by submitting to their own husbands. And I think in NLT it's like, this is how the old, the women of old used to make themselves beautiful, by putting mm -hmm. their trust in God and submitting to their husbands. <laughs> And I just love that because I just remember this one particular moment in like March where my mentor had just come to stay with me and like I was just, I think it was like the first or second day she was there and like she adorns herself with like a gentle quiet spirit like she doesn't do any external things I mean it, she puts herself together but it's you can tell it's not vain or prideful in any way at all and I was just like you are so beautiful mm -hmm. and then the next day I went to go I was just like thinking she's so beautiful but also like she's so beautiful because of her gentle and quiet spirit and because the Lord has made her beautiful not from her external appearance but mm -hmm. because of her heart and that just like shines in like so that's what shines in her the next day I remember I went to go curl my eyelashes and the Lord was like do you not trust me to make you beautiful I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so then I didn't curl my ashes for a long time because like that has been like my habitual thing. That was just like my only thing in my makeup routine was curling my ashes. That's the thing about a gentle and quiet spirit is that like that's the Lord's working. All of these things mentioned, it's like don't try to make yourself beautiful because I've already made you beautiful. Like mm -hmm. his righteousness that, and holiness that he produces in us, that's what makes us beautiful. Well, even kind of to go with that too, I remember like when I stopped getting my lips done, I was like, Lord, let me love my lips the way that you made them. And he did. Mm -hmm. And I like don't even think twice about them. I idolize things so easily and the Lord knows this. So whenever like even for literally five minutes, if I like start doing something or start like idolizing something, whether it's like a pastor or like a routine or like literally anything, once I like things consume me very easily, my thoughts and my mind and like my entire being. So I just have to be really careful and the Lord knows that. So whenever I try to like, whenever something new comes in and I'm like gravitating towards, he like really rips me back like really quickly. Last week I started to I want to start a skincare routine like I want to get started on a skincare routine I was watching a bunch of videos like literally like spent hours watching videos on like skincare and like retinol and like vitamin C serums and like hyaluronic acid and like <laughs> why you should wear sunscreen and all these things and I felt it consume me later that night I was like Lord I'm so sorry like I, I had to like release all that to him because I was like Lord I already feel this giving a grip on me like I need to release this to you and then the next day it kind of happened again and I ended up buying like a vitamin C serum I'm a hyaluronic acid. I was like looking at if you know me like I do not wear makeup ever at all So I ordered all those things online and then I made like a skincare routine schedule and like <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it out and put it on the back of my mirror and like made it all cute mm -hmm. I was like watching another video and the Lord was like so I went to go cancel it, but it already shipped. I had to like rip down the skincare routine. And as I was doing that, the Lord was just showing me so much about like vanity is bondage. Mm -hmm. Like vanity is bondage. And I literally felt like I was in bondage. Even just those two days, like I let it consume me so much. And I was like, and I realized like that day I did like a, oh, I was also researching on microneedling. <laughs> and so that night I did a microneedling treatment thing. And I looked in the mirror afterwards and I was like, I look uglier. <laughs> And I realized like the more you concentrate, I was like literally yes. looking at every single yes. wrinkle, every single imperfection. I'm like, I'm literally making myself uglier. Like that's the thing with vanity. You will never be satisfied. Yeah. You will and never be satisfied. And that's the thing about like the Botox was like every time I'd go in, I'd be like, hey, can we just like do a l one little thing here? Cause then they will help the, I was like, well, can we do a little? Then I was like, whoa, I will forever be here figuring out what I can change and fix which does not need to be fixed and so maybe just pray that the Lord give you that revelation of like 
you don't need to be fixed. There's nothing that about you that needs to be physically fixed. And that's what makes us beautiful is like the inward work that he does. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I realized like those, pat those two days that every time I'd look in the mirror, I'd like, you know that like mirror that's like super zoomed yes. in and just like, like what? How much time did I spend doing that? I, I realized like after I like repented and all that and like threw away the stuff and like was about to cancel my order, like the Lord was just speaking to my heart and I was just like talking to him about like vanity and he, I was just saying like, I was just, I had my journal. I was like, vanity is bondage. And like, as I was mm -hmm. repenting, for those things like I literally felt chains breaking off of me and wow. like this isn't even something that I've been doing for more than three days and I literally felt chains being broken off because even in just two days I became obsessive with my face and mm -hmm. obsessive with like every single spot and wrinkle and like trying to make it perfect the thing was vanity is like you you will never be satisfied like you will it's sad mm -hmm. like vanity is sad and it's mm -hmm. like I became and obsessive and it's so normalized too I think as a culture looking young forever is so idolized yeah and it's funny because when we were watching the chosen all of the women on there are so beautiful and i was like she's probably 70 years old but she's stunning to me and i was like why mm -hmm. is that well because she has bare nails she has wrinkles she doesn't have an ounce of makeup on she has gray hair frizzy hair she has sweat dripping down it's in biblical times biblical times they didn't have botox they didn't have like all this stuff that we had um, you mean not nebuchadnezzar Oh, no, not Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, what's his name? Um, it's in season one. The king... Um, I know who you're talking about. <sighs> what's his name? Doesn't it start with an N? <laughs> Nicodemus. <gasps> Uh, and Nicodemus's <laughs> wife and like yes she was using jewelry and like had like fine clothing on and whatever but like as a whole like I feel like I was able to really just see an older woman like an older lady who was like proud to be old like I have grays and like a couple of little gray strands and I was like oh, are you going yours out with me you are yeah I have two right here <laughs> when those two days were happening I almost plucked out my two white hairs <gasps> So anyways, like I don't think there's anything wrong with like putting lotion on your face and having a serum But like for me personally, like I was getting consumed by it I just pray that the Lord would convict you of what he feels like has you in bondage right now And maybe it's not even vanity. Maybe that's not even what you struggle with But I feel like I can say pretty confidently as a whole that is just something that our generation and world just struggles with right now You know what I realized like the thing where like you get dressed is called a vanity I know the fact that that thing is even called a vanity because I was like <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna like move my vanity over and I was like <laughs> The thing is called the van <laughs> Like I just like put two and two together Yeah But maybe you remember because I can't find the post that Nava did but I took a screenshot out of it But someone asked her about confidence and like liking and disliking parts of her body And Nava said that she would like literally like pray over that part So yeah, she was she like she would like bless her tummy Yes, like her, and like thank the Lord for like that being the womb that carried her children or she would like Bless her like her legs. She was like I used to not like the way my legs looked and I like prayed over them And like asked the Lord to bless these legs that like allow me to walk yeah. if you just really really pull far back And it's like there are so many things that we let consume us that don't need to be consuming us It also helps if you're like stop thinking about yourself Like I feel like vanity starts with just like being so concentrated on yourself Yes, which is why I feel like the Lord started doing this when I started having kids because I was like I started to do it out of convenience because I was like I don't have time to like like put on foundation and concealer and like do a whole routine that simplifying it was the easiest way but the reason I did simplify it was because I had like little kids to think about and like chase and serving so others automatically trumps vanity because yeah. you get your mind off of yourself and onto others which is what this Christian life is all about it's not about you mm -hmm. it's about God and others I feel like the church is lacking in old wise women I can't think of many older, wise, prayerful women of God in the church. And a reason why I think that is, is because women refuse to grow up and they refuse to mature and they refuse to grow old because and they're age. trying, they're, they refuse to age because they're trying so hard to stay in their 20s, to stay looking like they're young and wrinkle free. And like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just feel like there's a tie between like women refusing to get old and mature mm -hmm. and like the fact that there's such a lack of older women. Like in Titus yeah. 2, it talks about like what older oh. women are supposed to do. Older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior, not slanders or slave to much wine. They are to teach what is good and so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the work of God may not be revealed. 
reviled reviled or blasphemed so like when you think of a women's ministry and women's conferences like they're not doing what this does do like titus 2 gives older women very specific things on what they're supposed to do to younger women train young women to love their husbands and their children to be self-controlled to be pure working at home kind submissive to their own husbands that the word of god may not be blasphemed that's what i was saying i feel like there's a revival melanie i kid you not the amount of messages i got yesterday when i posted about my nails and so many women being like the lord told me that too really yeah nails nails and specific wow. i don't know what it is isn't that crazy hmm. so like and i was talking to some one of my friends and she was like yes there's so much like thank you lord for unity because there's unity in mm -hmm. this too and it's so like he's teaching all of us very similar things right now mm -hmm. this week because i messaged people back i was like when did you have this revelation and they go this week i'm like and me I, too while i was having the same revelation with all of the skincare and when you told me that i was like wow so i'm not crazy because oftentimes <laughs> like when the lord shows me things they're, they're really extreme and i feel like i'm crazy yeah so it's really encouraging well to maybe hear that, that he's also showing other people that well not maybe even extreme but maybe really really not extreme maybe, but like small. just yeah you know yeah. like small like yes. i feel like getting your nails done like right. that wasn't really it was habitual for me yes but was i like oh i need to fix them there's a chip like i wasn't like that y'all know i would let them outgrow yeah you're right i would my I, mine would outgrow yeah. the full eight weeks but I liked having them done. Yeah, it's just something really small. But last thing that I would love to like touch on was because I feel oftentimes for a lot of women, it's not sure there are outside things that are like helping contribute to this. But I think the biggest thing is mainly ourselves and our own thoughts about ourselves and like us looking in the mirror and like zooming in and seeing this, this and that. Cause there are some things that I've like said to Jordan, I was like, oh, I don't like this. And he's like, I literally have never noticed that. You know, like mm -hmm. there's so many little things. We are like our worst critics with that. But Philippians 4, 8 says, and now dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all that you learned and received from me everything that you hear from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Yeah, and that's something that I'm always having to pray over myself, especially since I'm at school and I live by myself and like, it's just me, myself and I and the Lord all day, every day. And I realize that my thoughts go crazy when I'm by myself. And that's, this is something I'm constantly having to pray over myself. And I realized I was like, but it's true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, admirable. There's only one thing that I can think of that is all of those things and that's Jesus. And so just keeping your mind and your thoughts and your heart up to him, like it takes care of things automatically. Oh, that's good. Yeah. All right. Bye guys, love you. <laughs> so yeah, well, I'm glad Melanie ended up coming in here. I'm gonna read that verse again. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Oof, all right, I got a challenge. I have two like little homework pieces, you guys, that I just wanted to kind of leave you off with. One, to pray and see what it is that the Lord wants you to get rid of this year. Or pray and ask the Lord to reveal what it is that, and it's one thing, one thing. Or just whatever you're idolizing. Yeah, or yeah, it doesn't even have to be with vanity. If vanity is not something that you struggle with, like pray and see if there's one thing that he wants you to stop this year. And all of this to say is not to say that I'm not gonna show you guys my skincare routine anymore. And like, I'm not gonna show makeup products I like anymore. 100% yes. But the place of my heart is very different and the Lord has transformed the way of which I go about that. And I'm constantly praying that he slowly and keeps continuing on this pattern of things. And maybe for you, it's just something that you want to just stop right then and there. Like you're done. You just want to throw all your makeup away and your skincare and like you just need this time. Then that's great. Like whatever the Lord is calling you to do. And then the second piece of homework is for us to all pray Philippians 4, 8 over our minds and our thoughts that the Lord, what we think of ourselves and of others and just our thoughts in general reflect Jesus and reflect what is pure and lovely and commendable and excellence and things that are worthy of praise because so oftentimes our thoughts are what are really toxic to us and to those around us without us even really realizing it. So yeah. Oh, I'm really hopeful and like, I'm excited. I feel like the Lord is doing something. There's something powerful about unity and community and like the Lord revealing certain things all at the same time. We have no idea what his plans are for that, but I'm really excited. So yeah, if you are okay with it though, I would love to hear if there is something that the Lord has been tugging at your heart for you to let go of this year. If you could comment it down below, because I think there could definitely be some, the Lord can speak through other people too. He can speak 
think through other things that like just I just still can't believe and fathom the fact that I posted it yesterday and so many of you said the same thing so yeah definitely just pray and see what the Lord has um, and if you're okay with it comment it down below so we can all be praying for each other and encouraging one another but love you guys and I'll see you in my next video bye